today we'll be talking about gamete morphology of six species of sea urchins here in Saipan. Okay, so uh, just a little bit of background about sea urchin gametes. Studies have shown that the sperm is typically characterized by having a conical head, a circular mitochondrion right underneath that, and a flagellate tail at the end. And the eggs are spherical, and they're surrounded by a vitelline membrane, membrane. And they're actually pretty big, so you can see them with the naked eye. Okay, so some background research. There hasn't been a whole lot of research done on urchin gametes. Um, but one study in 2008 was of a particular species of urchin that is found in the north East Atlantic, but also in the Northwest Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So what they did is they went out and gathered urchins from both places and collected their gametes. And they compared those, and what they found is that in the Northwest and Pacific population, the sperm was actually, the sperm head was almost twice the size of the same species found in the Northeast. And they also found what they studied it with transmission electron microscopy, and they found that their nuclear fossa at the tip of the sperm head was deeper than it was in the shorter sperm found in the northeast populations. And another study was done in 2003 uh, between the species Echinometra oblonga, which is the rock boring urchin, but it's black. And they compared species, the same species found in Okinawa and also Hawaii. And that study, they found significant differences between the sperm. They found that in Hawaii, the sperm was about half the size, the head of the sperm was half the size of that found in Okinawa, even though it was the same species. And then another significant study that I found was um, done in the Bahamas. And this was a comparison of sea urchins found in deeper waters and shallow waters. So the gametes collected from urchins in the deep water were found to have sperm head lengths between 9 to 12 micrometers. And those collected in shallow was about 4 to 6 micro micrometers long. So a pretty significant difference in that. So my study is this summer here in Saipan for three weeks. June, we collected urchins almost every day, and my goal was to compare species found in the same ocean, so the ocean around Saipan, um, from about the same depth, so we collected them between usually 30 to 60 feet underwater, and um, I wanted to collect those gametes and compare them between different species and see how they were different. Um, we did that through sperm and egg measurements, so measuring how big and long they were. And also, using the scanning electron microscope, we looked at outside structural differences between the different species. So these are the six urchins that I collected. So this top one, this is uh, Paracelina polii, and then this one is Eucidaris medullaria. Nudicrinus scadiopremnus, Mespelia globulus, Echinometra mathiae, and Globus centrodus mortensis. I don't know all the common names too, sorry, but you probably recognize you've seen these around. Okay, so what we did to collect was we, like I said, we were here for three weeks and we went out every day, or almost every day, and we, as soon as we saw an urchin, we would usually collect it. And so that we went out and just whatever we found, we would take it. <coughs> and we induced spawning by injecting them with 0.55 molar potassium chloride into the silomic cavity, which is right around the mouth of the urchin on the bottom part. And those of them that released gametes, they were immediately collected and put in a fixative solution containing glutaraldehyde, sodium picotylate, and sucrose. And so that fixative prepares them for use on the scanning electron microscope. So this is us going out to collect the urchins. 
And this is actually a picture that someone that was helping us with this took. And so this is a sea urchin. Um, it's a very close-up view of one. This is actually Clovis centrotus citratus, which is closely related to the Mertensi one, the purple shield urchin that you see in really rough waters. So this is a close-up view of that, and these are the eggs on it, really see. I thought that was a cool picture. Um, so in order to prep for the SEM, we, this is a very simplified version of what we did. So when I came back to Hawaii, the whole week after I came back, I was at the University of Hawaii, Manoa, preparing the samples used on the SEM. So for the sperm, we put them um, on a little filter paper on top of the aluminum stub, and we, through this process, just Cotylet buffer, osmium tetroxide, and dehydration. We prepared them for use on the SEM. And we did the same thing with eggs. We washed them in the same buffers and then we actually poured them onto a sticky aluminum stub. And then they were coated in a really, they call it sputter coating, uh, with a really thin layer of gold that the electrons can bounce off through the pitcher. And they were examined on the SEM at UH Manila. And this is a picture of the SEM that we use right here. If any of you have not seen one before. So what we found is that there were significant differences in sperm head length. So we used the uh, one-way ANOVA TP pairwise comparison test. And we found that uh, between certain species, they were significantly different. So some of them were not that different. So the Nudokina scotiopremnis and the Parasolina poii and Mesopelia globulus, they were really similar. So the, uh, these are average uh, sperm head lengths. So smallest is 2.18 was the average for that one. And then 2.4 was average for Mesopelia globulus. So not a huge difference. So those were grouped together. And then these Echinometra mathiae and Eusidaris metallaria were grouped together. And then Clovocentrotus mertensi, that was a significant, extremely significant difference. They had an average head, sperm head length of 7.14 micrometers. And we also found that the sperm head width, um, that was significantly different as well. The Clovocentrotus mertensi, which is the longest one, actually had the smallest average width, and we would measure it at the largest width of the head. And then Echinometra mathiae and Mesopelia globulus were around the same, 1.32 and 1.36. Uh, Nudokinus uh, scotiopremnus was in its own category at 1.44 and Parasolinia polii and Sidaris metallaria were the largest width at 1.93 and 1.55. And this is a picture of what we looked at for the SEM. So this is how we measured them as well and looking at the structural differences. So these five look pretty much the same. This is the sperm head, like the nucleus, and this is a circular mitochondrion, and then this is the flagellate tail coming off the back. The really long one the, was this one. It's kind of hard to tell because these are all sperm tails going everywhere. But right here is the mitochondrion, and then this is the sperm head, and it goes all the way up like that. So it was really different looking. We were super excited when we saw that. Um, and as for the eggs, they were significantly different as well. We found the smallest egg had an average diameter of 30.75 micrometers, and um, that was Eusidaris metallaria. Uh, Echinometra mathiae was a little bigger at 46.72, and then Parasolinia polii and Clovocentrotus mertensi were really similar. They had 51.43 and 52.65, and then Mespelia globulus was the highest. It was really big. It was 86.38 micrometers. And we didn't collect eggs from one of the species because we were unable to collect any females. And this is the SEM picture of a urchin egg. So this is just general, I think this is the Echinometra mathiae, this general image of the egg. They all pretty much look like that from far away. Um, but what we found as we zoomed in on them is they had very different surface proteins. So you could look at these and tell that it was a different species just by what was on the outer vitellin membrane. 
And we're not entirely sure what they are or their function or anything like that, but we did think it was interesting that each species looked very different on the outside. And so what we learned from our study is that certain species can be differentiated through measurements in the sperm head length, the sperm head width, and also the egg diameter. And along with the eggs, we could also differentiate the species by surface fiddling membrane surface structures. Um, and I'm actually continuing this research. We still have samples that can be processed. So what we're doing with those is we're using the transmission electron microscope on those. So we've only so far done it for two species. That's the uh, Colobus and Chodos metensi and the Parasolinia polii. And what we're trying to see is if basically they look different. So what the TEM is, for those of you who don't know, we slice up the section. So this is like an egg cut in half and then the electrons go through it rather than bouncing off of it so you can see the inside. So we're trying to see basically anything we can that's different between the two species. Um, looking at the overall picture along with this is the very edge of the egg. And then these are what are called analyte lamellae. And not a whole lot is known about these. They are found in highly dividing cells like oocytes and they know their storage for extracellular membrane. And they're not really sure how or why they use them, but we found these in our eggs. So this is a horizontal cross-section and a vertical one. You can see those. And this is a sperm. We're just trying to see what we can find that's different. In this one, you can see we think these are lipid droplets that they use for energy storage. And um, that's so far what we've learned. So I would like to thank Dr. Roger Goodwill, who's my mentor, Harry Blaylock, who want, took us out diving to find the urchin, Tina Carvalho, who is the um, microscope tech at UH, the biology department at UIUH, and the uh, biology